Welcome back, Zerka fans, to the January 2018 2 v 2 tournament. We have round two starting up. That's going to be on Contested Canyon, and we're going to be starting out with a match between Enyar Power Stasis and Catastrophe and Kingstead. Getting on right away as we have, well, basically me waiting for that to happen because I'd rather not wait long breaks if, or rather, rather not start off a break and then have this embarrassing thing of basically going, oh yeah, by the way, we gotta wait for the game to start. So having to do weird patter all the time. No, we are indeed going right into it. We are on Contested Canyon, which as a map is not one we've seen a lot in 1v1 for obvious reasons. Just look at the map. It's clearly meant for team game. But at the same time, it's might be a little bit big for 2v2 as well. It looks very much like a 3v3 map at minimum, but that's the case for a lot of maps. Anyway, Pyrostase is going for Spiders again. Seems to be a favorite of theirs. King's Dad, I'm curious what they're going to go for. Last time they went for Cloakie, which is a very standard and very universal pick. On the other hand, this map looks like it would favor Spiders a lot. Just look at how cliffy it is. Look at all the plateaus, all the places you could set up a Hermit or a Crab or something and just have a complete field day with your opponents. I would not be surprised if King's Dad decided to go for something a little... Maybe Air as well, because they do have their teammates going for Spiders. So that's covered. But the question is, what do you do to support that on a map like this? And King's Dad apparently going for Gunships, while at the same time, Anir... Anir and their teammate, Anir and Catastrophe, the Mumble Clan team, they've got that sorted out already. So they've, they're on Mumble, apparently. I mean, according to their clan, their clan tag says it. Right there. They're the name. Anir going for the Jumbot Factory, while at the same time, Catastrophe going for Cloakie and King's Dad. They are indeed going for gunships, going for straight off Locust build right off the bat, while at the same time, Pyrostase is going for your standard Fleas, and Catastrophe going for a much more aggressive build than I'd expect. Actually, both Catastrophe and Anir. Anir going for, okay, Anir is just scouting, getting some puppies, Make sure they know what's going on. Having them commit suicide, potentially productively, or trying to. While at the same time, we have the Glaive Assault coming out from Catastrophe. Not even going for early builders. They want those Glaives, and I'd say they are right to get them, considering the fact that Fleas, they are essentially, they are two Glaives what Glaives are to Reavers. They will go down in no time, but at the same time, they are wonderful scouts. At this point, though, it looks like Pyrostasis has been left roughly in the dark about what Catastrophe's got going on. However, though, they do know exactly what's coming out from Anir. So Mumble Clan does have stuff scattered out for them, and the Fleas as well, just going around as best they can. Actually, not even going around. They want blood. They're getting some information, but for the most part, they're going to try to get some harassment, which I don't agree with. That is going to be death for them, as we're clearly seeing right now. Those Fleas do not stand a chance. But that does leave things a little open for the Locust to come in and let King's Dead have some momentum at the start. Now, with that, we are seeing that... That momentum might be cut short if Catastrophe is able to get some damage in with these glaives. They are, however, going to the south or the south start point, which was not taken. Fire Stasis and Kingstad went over to center and top, so really this is about as far start as you can get between the two teams. Which might actually work pretty well here as the locusts are coming in, and Catastrophe is a ways away from their base. They don't have a whole lot in the way of defense. They do have some gremlins coming up, but at this point, we are gonna see them lose at least one of their metal extractors in the process. Killing off a locust. And that is, I'd say, a reasonable trade. But that being said, that does leave Mumble Clan with an 8 metal per second deficiency for the next few seconds as they rebuild and reclaim. At the same time, though, we have a near... They're going to have to deal with these these redbacks pretty shortly. And they do have the Pyros, which actually won't help all that much, come to think of it. Not to mention, going for that Toad is going to mean that there's even more of an opening for these redbacks to be able to get in and deal their damage. So at this point... It looks very strong for Kingstad and Pyrostasis. But of course, the bigger question is whether or not Catastrophe is able to get the damage in that they need. And they are managing to get a fair bit of damage. The Blastwing will help a bit, but the Blastwing might actually cause problems. I mean, fire is not something that identifies friend or foe, as with most projectiles in this game. But fire especially, since the area of effect is quite large and lingers. So with that, Catastrophe is able to get as much damage in as they took, which leaves the Mumble Clan team... Kind of low in economy. Actually, continuously low in economy. And they damaged... Sorry, Mumble Clan. Mumble Clan's still low in economy, despite the fact that West, damaged, sorry, West was damaged there. I really wish this would actually align to the actual teams, because this is, this is honestly kind of confusing. But alas, I can't let it do that for some reason. I, that, besides the point, that's something that could be written in later. The point, though, is that Mumble Clan, despite the fact that they got that really nice harassment in there, is still 
not in the best of positions econ- economically. They've not expanded anywhere near as much as the Western team, especially considering what Kingstad's been building up over to the north. And as well, what Pyrostasis is starting to build up over to the south. And with Pyrostasis setting up an ambush of Redbacks here, this could be very dis- devastating with the Moderator going on the top of this hill. I'm not sure they're trying to go for range or what, because at this point, Moderators, I mean, Moderators don't have extra range from being on a hill. They are managing to spot the Redback, but the thing is, that range advantage... Oh, that range advantage was there! If, oh, if Pyrostasis went and took advantage of that, they could have taken out the Moderator, no problem. But at this point, the Moderator is going to win any fights. Anir is well aware those Redbacks are there. They're prepped for them. And the way that we're seeing... Catastrophe... Or we're seeing... Pyrostasis deal with them. It's actually kind of hard to see team colors in the dark, to be honest. The way we're seeing Pyrostasis deal with this stuff is... It's really smart. They're nullifying the range advantage by using the cliff. The problem, however, is that they didn't take advantage of that when they had the chance. So right now, they're going into open ground with nothing stopping the Redbacks from being destroyed. I mean, some damage will be dealt, but they won't be able to get rid of the Moderators before anything happens. They won't be able to do as much damage as they'd like to. They might be able to get rid of the Jumpout Factory, but it's unlikely with... The, yeah, the second Moderator coming in, no. If that last Redback came in and killed one of the Moderators when it was on the top of the cliff, which it could have easily done then it would have been a very different story. That Jumbot Factory would be dead, and Anir would be pretty dead in the water, honestly. As it stands, though, Anir's actually in a really good spot, and Radovadra, even a spectator, pointed out that, yeah, there was way too much delay there. Far too much hesitation, and the iron cooled quite rapidly, leaving not a whole lot of opportunity for Pyrostasis, and at this point, putting Pyrostasis potentially in a death scenario, considering what Catastrophe has lined up. And Catastrophe literally putting in a line of glaives into the, the base of Pyrostasis, while at the same time, there's an attack coming in from Anir over to get rid of some of the builders from Kingstad. So the com the combined attack here should be able to at least deal some damage, harass a bit, maybe get some economy. Not a whole lot of actual mileage off that, though. Despite the pressure coming in and a few defensive structures being destroyed, not a whole lot was actually lost. Not even the worker. So the Weaver's going to have no problem rebuilding. And while Anir's attack was more successful, it's still actually kind of iffy. Considering that Anir's... And here's Commander is under heavy threat. The metal extractors are being under heavy threat. Just in general, everything is starting to fall apart. And near, I mean, yeah, they've got the Toad coming in here, so that's going to help out a lot. That's going to at least potentially, that's going to get rid of the, the Harpy. Maybe get rid of the Nimbus too. Potentially. It's at least putting the Nimbus in a risky position. And it looks like Kingstown, are you just trying to get that as far, yeah, just get as far away as possible. Push it away from that Toad, but that's still tricky. The Toad can still get it, and that Reclaim is still going to go to the we to the Mumble Clan team if that Nimbus go down, which it very well will. And that is about, what, 700 Reclaim? 760 Reclaim all to the West team. Sorry, all to the Mumble Clan team. Damn it, I really wish I could switch those. The yeah, Mumble Clan is in a very strong position right now, but at the same time, they have to deal with a bit of pressure. The Fleas, though, not huge pressure. It's a bit of pressure. It's a bit of surround, is not going to manage to get a whole lot of mileage. There's way too much in the way of defenses, and pretty much any defenses will stop fleas. In fact, I'm rather surprised we are seeing Pyrostasis go heavily for fleas as they are. The Hermits they built last game were much more effective, and they would probably continue to be effective here, but at this point, the fleas are finding some weak points here and there where defenses have not been built up, and where they can get rid of some workers, get rid of some metal extractors, get a lot of mileage out of the harassment, and indeed, make sure that the center is not taken by Catastrophe. I mean, it's going to be a bit tricky. The Fleas won't be able to get much off these Glaives. But, hey, at the very least, they are able to get a bit of damage here. Are able to get a little a little bit of mileage. Get rid of this Gremlin, which is huge. Every Gremlin down is another area that the Air Forces from Kingstack can actually go and have fun. But at this point, there are so many Razors out there that it's not going to be possible for Kingstack to have that much free roam. They'd love to have it, but it's not theirs. At the same time, though, we're seeing a near just... They're building up a bit, but not really rebuilding yet. They have some rebuild plans. I mean, they have stuff on queue, but it's been a few minutes. So really, despite losing that Nimbus, it's it's been successful. The Nimbus hasn't been reclaimed yet. So while Mumble Clan does have a lot of metal just on the table, they can grab it whenever they like. They haven't done so, and that's live leave that's given West a massive advantage. If you look at the overall metal extraction, Kingstad and Pyrostasis are way ahead for both metal used and metal produced. More so Kingstad than Pyrostasis, but still. Like, the team is far ahead, just considering by team, they have had no excess, or very little excess. Overall, they are 4,000 metal ahead, on top of the fact that they're all, well, sorry, they're 4,000 metal ahead. Mumble Clan has managed to nullify that by using attrition, so unit value has been neck and neck. But if fights can be won on the side of 
the West team, then, well, there's not much to be said about that. It's going to be a victory for the West team, as long as they can maintain enough of an economic advantage and turn that into an actual military advantage, they're good. But yeah, Mumble Clan, does, all they have is their attrition, and that's going to start falling apart just because the, the economic advantage for the West side is still large. And it's still larger than the attrition. The attrition maintains about 4k. The economic advantage is just going to grow. I still don't know why we're seeing the fleas coming in from Pyrostasis. I mean, it almost feels like that's just a distraction. Kingstad's building up some cloaky bots. They have, obviously, the more solid units available, and I feel like the fleas are just there to keep Catastrophe busy. Like, it's a lot of death, but it's very cheap death. The fleas are 20 metal each, so it's not like there's a whole lot being lost there in terms of attrition. It's just that is the opportunity of the factory being used to be built, and indeed, that is a distraction. Pyrostasis as well going for the cloaky bot factory, going for a bunch of reavers, because, of course, all the fleas, that encourages a lot of glade production, which encourages... Well, Reaver production on their opponent's side, and it doesn't seem that Catastrophe has clued in that their opponents are going to go for Reavers. Or, in general, that their opponents are using all of these fleas as a distraction play. So and now I get it. Now I see what what Pyrostasis was trying to do, and it's pretty clever. Now Pyrostasis had just setting up a scout line, which is what you generally do with fleas. But hey, they did a really good job there, at least maintaining a bit of a screen, maintaining the center control, keeping Catastrophe on their toes... Getting rid of a few glaives here and there, getting rid of a few metal extractors here and there, and then pushing Catastrophe to build up as many glaives as possible without even considering the need for Ronin. Of course, the question becomes, what opportunities are there to get rid of, say, this Jack here? Or other pressure from Anir? Because Anir, they're setting up more and more to the north. They've got airplanes as well. So it's going to be a bit hard to maintain what they need. And at the same time, the Reavers have been revealed, so we are going to see some Ronin immediately come out from Catastrophe. All right, I would expect we would, but apparently no. Apparently they're just going to focus on size instead. Size and size and gremlins, or just the gremlins, not even focusing on the size. Get the gremlins, get the Ronin, get that set up. They do have that on, which means there's a very limited time for Pyrostasis to get in. And we saw earlier this match, Pyrostasis was not taking things when they were available. They were not taking the opportunities as they came up, and I believe they might actually be trying to turn that around. Going for a Catastrophe's Commander right off the bat. They will lose a Reaver or two, but hey, that's a Commander. That puts Mumble Clan even further behind in terms of economy, and at this point, that also helps with the attrition. So, right now, it's clearly an advantage for the West team, even though Mumble Clan, they did have a slight economic parity, but they don't have the lead. And on top of that, with Kingstack coming in with the Glaives over to the south, that is a great combo of flank play. With that, there's not a whole lot Mumble Clan has economically, and it looks like Catastrophe, they managed to hold that off, but at, at massive cost. They have some reclaim, though. That's something. 650 reclaim, that'll help them get back in this, but they've been so behind economically, and now with the attrition lead falling as well, we're seeing an 8k lead in economy. Unit value is now a 5k spread. That is, Mumble Clan has uh, two thirds the units of West by metal. So, I don't know how they're going to get back from this. They've been pushed hard. There are some opportunities they might have through this north side Jack and, and Toad combo. But the question, of course, is can they really make that work? Because that Jack's almost dead. The Toad can only hit air. And the main assault force is down center. Top side of the map almost doesn't matter. Kingstad could get a bit of pressure from that, which would be a problem. But again, that Jack's almost dead. In fact, the Ronin are going to be able to take care of it and soon have to take care of that Toad, if they even care to. And indeed, they are. So with that, the, that entire north assault is done. And on top of that, Mumble Clan, they've lost center. Catastrophe had a pretty strong hold in the center, but the loss of their commander on top of the loss of the entire army with the push of Reavers, like that just makes it even tougher. And even with Aronian coming in, of which there aren't very many coming in from Catastrophe, actually, so at this point, there's not a whole lot. And with this entire complete army, this is going to be very difficult to deal with for Mumble Clan. I don't even know if they can. It's 2-1 to one metal lead. At this point, West team just needs to push. If West Team pushes, that is going to be game. There's hardly anything to stop them, even with the anti-air defenses that have been built up. Those aren't going to be that major. The only thing that they really have is the Thunderbird, and of course, we have the Tridents coming in and the Ravens coming in. That's going to... sorry, the Harpies coming in. No Ravens yet. If there were Ravens, they would be on the side of Mumble Clan, but still. There's not much to be said for that. I mean, yeah, okay, the Thunderbird's coming in, dealing a bit of damage, but now it's been exposed. Now, if the Tridents and Harpies wanted to, they could go after it. They don't, at this point, want to. But, again, we have Kingstack coming in here. Kingstack coming in here with the Glaives, getting rid of the, ra the Razor, although, admittedly, I don't know why these Glaives aren't helping, but hey. 
Getting rid of that razor, if they get rid of that razor, that opens up the north side. Of course, they don't even need to, they cracked it open just by walking in. Just by making that push. Of course, the Phoenix coming in, trying to do what it can. Getting rid of a few of the glaives, actually getting rid of the entire army of glaives. So that's going to slow down Kingstad's assaults, but not by much. And again, they can just build up more gunships. They can just build up more tridents. They can build up more harpies. They're, at this point, focusing primarily on wasps, but they have the potential. They can build up whatever the heck they want, because they've got this game in the bag. This one, Mumble Clan having lost that northeast side, losing most of their economy as a result, and this is their last push. Their last attempt to get out of this, which the harpies, they're going to be just tear tearing to shreds. And despite, I mean, despite the Thunderbird trying to help out, trying to fix this stuff, it's not going to be enough. It's a nice attempt, and the Phoenix is going to be far better for this, but it's still, that's the last desperate attempt. I mean, they're burning their own power plants just to try to save their base. That's how desperate it's gotten. So really, it just overall came down to the fact that not a whole lot of pressure was able to be applied by the Mumble Clan. They got a few... They got some economic momentum here and there, but the thing is, we saw Catastrophe come in here and try to harass, but Pyrostasis was already prepared for that, and Kingstad didn't go for the economy. They went they went for gold. They went for the factory, which is a bit of an odd... Sorry, Catastrophe went for the factory, and that's an odd choice. Going for the factory right off the bat, unless you have an overwhelming force, is suicide, and you're not going to get anything for it. If your force isn't overwhelming, it's likely a suicide mission. If it's a suicide mission, go for the economy. Go for the small victories that are going to give you the slight advantage going forward. Which is exactly what we saw coming out from the West team over and over again. Kingstad and Pyrostasis, they just had that. Whereas Mumble Clan, I never really saw any point where they were getting a huge amount of momentum or even getting anywhere near their opponent's base except that one assault by Catastrophe, which itself was catastrophic. And then overall, of course, that flip from the, from the fleas, like that was a really clever play from Pyrostasis. Mass fleas as a distraction while you build up a Kalukabot factory to build up Reavers. Because it's not like fleas are that expensive, so you can easily throw that in there. It's no big deal. You just throw in the fleas, you have that. Your opponents have to deal with fleas, because if they don't, they will lose things. Because fleas do deal some damage, but the fleas are 20 metal each, so you're not losing that much. You still have a decent army of fleas, that's enough of a distraction. Your opponent's convinced you're continuing to go for spiders, while at the same time, you're just building up everything else. And now with that North Razor gone, there's nothing that can stop pretty much anything from the North. There's nothing can stop the Air Force coming in here to try to stop these Thunderbirds, to try to stop any Vultures coming in to scout it out. This is this is where the assault ends. I mean, the Phoenix will be coming in as well, and actually will be able to deal quite a bit of damage. Not sure why they're standing here, because the Phoenix has been revealed before, and it's not dealing damage? I'm having a bit of a hard time finding the, finding the position to deal damage in, and luckily for Kingstead, most of the Glaives were missed. Because the way the glaives were clumped together like that, they were pretty well just fodder for that. But it's fine. That is it. King's Dad and Pyrostasis take the match with a massive unit value lead and a consistent metal income lead. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like I said, Mumble Clan never managed to get the harassment in that West Team got. It was one opportunity Mumble Clan had. West Team had two or three around in the early game. And West Team was expanding everywhere. And yeah, it's definitely time for tell. So with that, I'm not sure what other games are currently running, since we have, of course, other games in round two, and it looks like round two is actually mostly done. Right, looking at the brackets right now, we see that Black Touch and Kshatria won their match against Cortez the Killer and Lynx, while not sure what's going to happen in Minato Trip Pack versus Mordor and Poketrool, but once we get the results from that, we will obviously be able to update everything with that. Still, though, it's a question of how is that going to play out, because... Well, that's really the question. At this point, 400 and Google Frog have won the most. They're currently in a 2-0 record. Saniac, Topcat, Blachich, and Kachatra are both on a 1-1 record. Cortez the Killer and Lynx with a 0-2 record. And we see Anir and Kachatra are also going to have a perfect full win record right off the bat. But of course, the question is, how much are we going to see of that? And at this point, we are seeing... Well, to be fair, that's actually not bad. I mean, 2-0 right off the bat. At this point, of course, it's probably going to be the top four that get into the bracket. So whatever the top half is. But I don't know how this is going to go. It might just be a round robin. 
Considering that round robin means everyone plays everyone, I'm not sure if we're going to see a bracket, to be honest. I feel like having a bracket would actually be a little redundant, considering that, like I said, we have... We are going to have, essentially, everyone play everyone. Anyway, let's see if Mordor and Poker Tools game is still going on. I feel like it might be, actually. Or... Nope, from the looks of it, it is not. We're on to round three. Not sure what the result is on that, but hey. It is going to be a... Like I said, it's going to be round three, which is going to be on a map I'm not sure about. I think for this one, we have not seen... What have we not seen? We haven't seen more drone poker rule. So... I'll check them out, see how they're playing. I mean, thus far, they have... They won. They lost one of their matches, but that was against 400 and Google Frog, which, yeah, that's... Good luck with that. But at the same time, we are still waiting on the map to actually be built up. Looks like we're going to see this stuff. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to take a break, short break until we get up to round three. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> 